Testing, testing. You know, I have to have a watch, so if you don't do that, we can't start. I have to wait for James. Sure. <laughs> right. I, I went to set the time, and I'm like, no, two weeks from now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Riverside Park Church of God, the best church east of the Mississippi. <laughs> That's right. But today I'm going to give a reason why. So a couple of quick announcements. <clears throat> uh, first of all, I'm going to start with, I don't know if you guys knew that there was a school right outside of Flint that stayed with us Thursday night and Friday night, Byram School District, the high school. Churchill High School put on a, a big robotics competition and the cheapest hotel for the school was like $1,000 for them to stay. So that really wasn't in their budget. So they asked if they could stay here and we said yes. So they gave us a couple hundred dollars and they gave this to the women's ministry to help out. They even made a homemade card, everybody signed it and what was really cool, so they asked me to come back last night to make sure that they had everything cleaned up. Every single one of the kids came up, shook my hand, and said thank you on behalf of their team to the church. They want to come back and do a sleepover on a Friday night and a Saturday night. They want to do a, comp, um, a demonstration of their robots, or their robot for us. And what's really good about this is Last night when they were leaving, their head chaperone told me that this is the first time several of the students have ever been in a church. Yes, and they started asking questions. They want to come back and actually come to one of our Sunday services. So they're from Flint, Schwartz Creek area. So they're about an hour and a half away. <clears throat> and the only thing we couldn't provide for them were showers and Churchill High School let them take showers. Uh, one of the chaperones told me, he said it was so awesome. On a Friday night at like two in the morning, all the guys slept in here, all the girls slept downstairs. The boys set up a few chairs and started preaching. <laughs> yes, and they, they were really appreciative. They loved it, they wanna come back. Uh, some of them might even be watching us right now, so. So I wanted to share that with you first. Some other quick announcements. This Wednesday, remember, is Bible study. It's at 6 o'clock now. Then the next two Saturdays will be small group. We pushed it back because we weren't going to have enough people for it because um, somebody's car was broke down, this person was tired, I was tired, Gina was at her mom's, so we just pushed it back a week but we're going to do it the next two weeks so we keep everything on track. Um, the greeters for next week is going to be Amy and Mike Ashton. The coffee is Doug and Cindy Worcester. And the kids' teachers are Connie and Elaine. So, so those are the announcements for today. Back. Good morning. Um, back in July, we did some, some old gospel favorites, and I 
couldn't believe it had been that long, but we're going to sing some of those again this morning, starting with when we all get to heaven. So if you want to stand or sit down, whatever works for you. we're going to do that favorite of I'll fly away and oh I saw the light and then I'll fly away this is the one you got to keep up with one two one two three <laughs> Like a stranger in the night Praise the Lord, I saw the light I saw the light, I saw the light No more darkness, no more night Now I'm so happy, no sorrow in sight Praise the Lord, I saw the light Man, I wandered alone Worries and fears I claimed for my own Then like a blind man God get back aside Praise the Lord I saw the light I saw the light I saw the light No more darkness No more night Now I'm so happy No sorrow inside Praise the Lord
needed. Good morning. <laughs> thank you for allowing me to fill the pul pulpit today. Thank you, Pastor Dave. And also, thank you, Pastor Dave, for the title of this week's sermon. It's uh, not the Chinese food I had last night. So two weeks ago, uh, Pastor Dave in his sermon said, you know, it wasn't the Chinese food that George had last night that made him decide to be a pastor, to follow the steps and all that. And I, I'm back there in the back where Kelly and my mom's at. I'm like, that's a perfect title. And that, that ties in what I wanted to talk about. <clears throat> so today I want to talk about two things. One, you guys are probably sick of hearing me talk about love, but I'm going to talk about love today. And two is boundaries. So this church, I've been attending almost 17 years. And this church, by far, is the most lovable church I've ever been to. You know, Pastor Paul always said this was the best church east of the Mississippi. I think he really meant this is the most loving church east of the Mississippi. And, and I want to, there's a, several reasons for that. So when we first came to this church, it's almost 17 years ago, Rick Andre and Holly Andre, two people I went to school with and Kelly went to school, well, we went to school with Rick, not his wife. They invited us to church, we came. Garrett was two and a half years old, and we put him in the nursery with Miss Garnetta. And I think, Loretta, you and Jerry Dial took Trevor and George. So like any two and a half year old kid, they're gonna cry, they want their mom, they want their dad, and all that. Well, we go to, to grab him after church. That kid was crying because he didn't wanna leave Miss Garnetta. The following week when we got to church, that kid's trying to run into the building to get to Miss Garnetta. George and, and uh, Trevor, they're like, hey, can we go to church this week? Well, we're, we're planning on it. And then they would tell all their friends, we get to go to this cool church. They just love us. We, we get to do this. We get to do that. It's great. And you guys have helped raise our children. And, and I want you guys really to know that. We are so proud to say that you guys are our family. And, you know, I, I told you guys that Pastor Paul was one of the big reasons I decided to follow my calling and become a pastor. Well, the, as I was preparing for this sermon, I realized that he was a small part of it. The big part was all of you. You guys showed me how to love. You showed my kids how to love. You showed my wife how to love. You showed us how to overlook our flaws. So thank you for that. What I'm very proud of is when our new members come in, how we treat them. We hug them. As a matter of fact, anytime I tell anybody I invite them to church, I tell them, if you don't like hugs, don't come to this church because everybody's going to give you a hug. I said, you know, one person's going to trip you, meaning Gail, so she could be the first one. But I'm wondering, I'm wondering, who would trip who? Gail or Elaine trip each other? Which one would trip who to be the first one? <laughs> and I mean that sincerely because Elaine, when she took over one of the greeters, she doesn't stand inside the hallway. She's in the vestibule. She wants to be the first one to greet you. And she greets you with a smile and a hug. She doesn't care who you are. As a matter of fact, when we first started coming to the church, Elaine wasn't even here. You've been coming, what, five, six years, seven years? You know, uh, the Wick Lions, they started coming here. They, they love it. That was actually a mistake for them. They were actually looking for a different church, and they came in here, and they've been here with us ever since. Diane and Amanda, they knocked on the door one day and, <clears throat> and uh, asked if we were still doing service and all that. We opened them with open arms. And... What's really great about this, and I can prove that we are a very loving church. I don't know if you guys remember, about summertime last year, we did some surveys. We sent out an email and we had everybody answer four or five questions each, each week. The number one response in those surveys was the fellowship and the love of this church. Second was our sermons. Pastor Paul's sermon, now we got Pastor Dave, 
which gives awesome surveys, and I'm hoping to learn a lot from him. <laughs> so, and I'm gonna print those survey responses out so everybody can see them. I'm gonna tape them to my uh, window on the office <clears throat> so you guys can see them. Because we did those, those surveys to see where we're at, what we need to change to make, make this church even better. So, Mark 12, 33 says, to love God with all of your heart, with all of, <clears throat> with all of your understanding, and with all of your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So this church, we love God more than anything. We've got that. We can check that off. We love our neighbors, but we can't check that off yet. And here's why. Because we, we don't love our neighbors like we love ourselves. And that takes me into the boundaries portion of the sermon. So what are boundaries? Boundaries are nothing more than something that tells us A from B, my property from your property, things like that, okay? <clears throat> Why do we need these boundaries? Well, does anybody want somebody just walking into your house, decorating it, taking what they want? No. I don't want people doing that. I don't want to walk into your house and take your stuff. Now, I might walk into my mom's and take her banana pudding, but that's about it. <laughs> Yes, my mom makes like the best banana pudding. I am nice to my mom. <laughs> but why do we need them? We, uh, we need them for security, safety, and things like that. And there's several examples in the Bible. In Genesis, the separation of light and darkness. Let the waters under the sky be gathered to one place and let the dry land appear. Moses striking the rock, um, Moses with Mount Sinai. I mean, it goes on. Everywhere in the Bible, there's boundaries. <clears throat> and there's two things that God told us about boundaries. One, when he gave a boundary, they were very clear. So let's look at Moses with, with Mount Sinai. He said, do not let any animal or person get on Mount Sinai. There was, it was, there was boundaries for it. If you did, they would die, okay? So, so think about this. He made it very clear on what the boundaries are. But the second thing, and the most important thing about that is, is God never said he didn't love us when he gave those boundaries. He loves us. Even though punishment or the consequences were for breaking these boundaries was death. He never said, well, if you cross onto this, you're gonna die because I don't love you. Never once do you ever see that in the Bible. He loves us. He gave the clear boundaries and we need these boundaries. <clears throat> and some of the, ex one of my favorite examples, so, I'm gonna be leading the small group this week and we're gonna be going over boundaries. So I had to read this book called Boundaries. Then I got the newer book and all that and they had some really good scenarios in there. And I'm gonna change some of the names and stuff. I'm gonna use Gina in this one, okay? Because this actually was a problem that Gina and I had when I used to work for Dynamic Edge doing IT. <clears throat> I would come home from work and wanna work want to work more because I had so much work. Gina, she would want to go out. We'd want to, she'd want to go to the movies, go to dinner, just do something, spend time with me, go to the movies, watch a movie. I didn't do that, but nope, I've got to work, want to work. So who's at fault there? Because she was upset with me because I wanted to work and she wanted to do something. Who's at fault? How many of you think it was my fault? How many of you think it was Gina's fault? My mom. So you're right, mom, and everybody else is right. It was actually both of ours. Because I just said, God gave clear boundaries. Gina didn't give me any clear boundaries. I didn't give her any clear boundaries. I just, hey, my boundaries, I want to work. I got to get this done. Well, her boundaries was family time, where if she would have came up to me and said, hey, listen, we need to spend some time together. I want to set some boundaries. 
on Monday through Friday from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock, you're mine. You're the family's. These are our boundaries. We're going to sit down, have dinner together. <clears throat> We're going to watch a movie together as a family. We're going to go do this as a family. I want one Saturday a month to do this. I want Sunday mornings from 1030 until 1230 for us to go to church. A lot of times I missed church because I was working. But again, we didn't communicate these boundaries. My boundaries, I should have told her, is, hey, honey, I need these, these boundaries because I need to work. I need to get these done. If I don't get these done, I lose my job. <clears throat> but I could have worked, those, worked around her boundaries. I could have stayed up a little longer. I could have got up earlier. But I didn't, clear, I didn't have clear boundaries with her. She didn't have clear boundaries with me. So that, that's a big problem when we don't cl clarify our boundaries. If God can clarify his boundaries, why can't we? Is it wrong for you to clarify your boundaries? No, absolutely not. Um, so, and when you set boundaries, you have to remember it's for your, your safety, your health. Over the last three years, I've worked here at the church. I've put in a lot of hours. I felt over the last several months that several people believe that I should be here 24 hours a day, seven days a week, or, or a phone call away. I realize that that's not healthy. Gina's actually been telling me that for years. <coughs> Janet and Jess have been working with me, along with Gina, <coughs> throughout the weeks leading up to this. One is I've been setting some boundaries. One of the biggest boundaries I've set is I don't carry my cell phone throughout the day here. I'll leave it in my office. So people will call me and I don't get the message. The best way to get a hold of me during the day is here at the church. Two, my cell phone goes into a focus mode from seven o'clock at night until six in the morning. And what that means is if you're not one of the 20 people that I've designated in that, your call won't go through. Your text message won't go through. Your Google call won't go through. Your Facebook messenger won't go through. I had to do that. I had to get some separation. And you're saying, well, George, you're gonna be a pastor. What does that matter? You know, you need to be at, be, be at our beck and call. That's not true. If something happened at this church, Pastor Dave and Marge knows how to get a hold of me. They're on that list. Connie, Steve, Doug, there's ways to get a hold of me. I need to have time with my wife. I need to have time with my son. There's nothing more annoying than your, your FaceTiming your son when he's overseas in the army and your phone's blowing up just to say, hey, I stubbed my toe. Can you have prayer with me? And then, oh, yeah, you know, I, I stubbed my toe going to the refrigerator because I wanted a glass of milk, and then I realized the milk spoiled. You know, that might be a big thing for you, but it's not a big thing for me. And do I feel bad for making these boundaries? At first, I felt really bad. But reading this book, one of the things it points out is, I can't control your feelings. You can't control my feelings. So by me setting these boundaries, you're getting upset, that's on you. I, I have to worry about my health. <clears throat> um, one, one of the examples they gave us in that book, it, it was really cool. Um, I'm gonna find my notes on it. There's so many, so many notes that I had for this. Uh, oh, here it is. So, you know, I'm going to pick on you again. <laughs> so, when the reason I'm going to pick on Gina because when her and I first got married, she was this person, and I was still that person. So she was always late, always late. So that's why I'm picking on her. I was always okay. We got to go, 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 go. This is the schedule. So that's why I'm going to pick on her. So the example in the book was <coughs> this guy. He's been married for so many years. 
but his wife is always late, always. Well, this, this guy was actually going to get an award from work, and they were, there was a big dinner for it. So he told his wife two weeks ahead of time, hey, we have to leave at 5 o'clock. We have to be to the venue by 6, because they need to go over some things with me, tell me where I'm going to sit, and they're going to start serving meals at 6.30. Well, it's a 45-minute drive. Well, you want to leave at 5 in case there's traffic. Well, his wife wasn't ready at 5 minutes after 5. She was still putting on her makeup. He left without her. She was mad, really mad. So in this case, Gina was mad at me. But you know what? Whose fault is it? It was her. I had clear boundaries. After doing that a couple times, she's always ready. And there was a similar situation like that. But Gina's also set some boundaries with me with time over the years. So I'm always, hey, we have to be here at this time. Vacations, I set the schedule. We got to go, 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 go. Nope. Her boundaries are, we go on vacation, we have nothing planned. We'll do what we want when we want. Now there is a downfall for that. I'm exhausted, I'll sleep. <laughs> so she has to get me up, and it takes her a while to get me up. But if I know, hey, I got to be up at 7 o'clock, I'm up at 7 o'clock. But I want to thank Jess and, and Janet a lot for helping me set boundaries. <clears throat> and one thing that Janet has really taught me a lot over the last few weeks, I don't need to justify boundaries. You don't have to justify boundaries. So if you, example, one of my buddies uh, who lives in Virginia comes up here for Michigan football games. He likes to go to a cigar bar on Friday nights, a bunch of us all meet up that went to school and college together. If I told Dan, no, I don't want to go, he'll be like, okay, don't worry about it. <clears throat> we'll catch up later this weekend or next week. I don't have to tell Dan, no, I don't drink because of my stomach and all that. I don't want to have a cigar tonight. But one thing I've noticed that we all do is we try to justify why we don't want to do something or we can't do something because we don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. But you got to remember, you have feelings too. So by saying, hey, I just can't do it tonight, or no, I just don't want to, we should learn to accept that. <clears throat> and let me tell you, Janet will still tell me, George, quit it. You're giving too much information. Just You can't do it. You don't want to do it because I love to help people. She'll tell you, George, quit volunteering to help people. But when it comes to computer stuff, I love it. Like game night, I was working on Ruth's iPad. And Gina explained to everybody, hey, that's, that's his game. He loves these challenges. He loves playing with computers. So if you have a computer problem, I don't mind. Come, come and see me. <laughs> I absolutely love it. You know, also, we have to look at, because a lot of people say, well, we're, in Galatians, it says, bear one another burdens and fulfill the law of Christ. It says to bear one another's burdens. It doesn't say take possession of their burdens. So if you have a problem, it doesn't mean that I have to take your problem and make it mine. So Doug, I'm going to pick on you in this example. <laughs> so say Doug's been working for a job for 18 years. And he calls me up and says, George, sick of my job. I'm sick of the way they treat me. They treat me like garbage. You know, what do I do? Well, most people would say, hey, let me call my brother-in-law. Let me call my brother. Hey, let me call my friend. I'm sure we can get you a job. Now we just took his problem and made it our problem. No. We should say, well, Doug, you've been there 18 years. Do you really want to leave that job? You're two years from retirement and all that. Do you really want to leave? Well, no, not really. I don't want to. I don't want to lose out on my pension. Okay. Have you talked to your boss? Have you set some boundaries? Well, he wants me to work every Saturday and part of the day on Sunday, and I don't get paid for it. Well, have you talked to talk to your boss about it? Well, no. Set some boundaries. Say, hey, boss. Hey, you're not paying me for Saturday. You're not paying me for Sunday. Can I have some comp time? 
can I get paid for this? If he says no, take it to their boss. If he says no, I just want to get out of there, I'm tired of it. Again, the way to help him would be, hey, Doug, why don't you come over to my house? I have Tuesday and Wednesday available this night, these days from 6 to 8. Make sure you have your resume on a flash drive. You can't come over unless you have it. And then come over, we'll work together on addressing it, and then we'll start applying for jobs together. I'll give you some leads. But see how I helped him carry the burden? I didn't take the burden on myself. So that's what we have to learn. Boundaries will help us. It's biblical. We have to learn to have these boundaries. When we have these boundaries, then we can love our neighbor as we love ourselves. That is the big thing. We've got the love of God down, but we don't have the love for ourselves down. We don't set these boundaries, and the boundaries are very important. And I'm lucky enough to have Gina helping me with these boundaries. I'm lucky enough to have Jess and Janet as coworkers that help me put these boundaries in place and work with me on this. And I really encourage you to come to Saturday's small group because if Jess can still come, we've got a great thing planned <laughs> for this. And remember, God only gives us so much. He only gives us what we can handle. He also gives us gifts. And these gifts are to help people come to the Lord, to help them know God's kingdom. And we have to remember, we're not Jesus Christ. We cannot carry everybody's burdens. God never put us on this planet to carry everybody's burdens. He gave us, he put us here to help carry people's burdens and to carry our own and to ask for help. Because one of the biggest flaws I have is I hate to ask for help. Like, I, I didn't call Gail and ask Gail to put me on a prayer list this week. I had to go for um, an ultrasound on my legs. They thought I had blood clots. I didn't tell anybody. Gina's been on my case. You need to have the church pray for you. No, it's okay. I got this. Well, there's a perfect example of how you guys could have helped me. I could have come to you and asked you to pray. But instead, I tried to carry that burden myself. I tried to bear that cross myself instead of asking for help. So I'm lucky to have Gina. I just wish I would listen to her more on things like this. Yeah, remember, rule number one, happy wife, happy, happy life. Another rule, your wife is always right. Rule two, if the wife is wrong, read rule number one. <laughs> So with that in mind, love yourself, set boundaries and clear boundaries, and you'll continue to love the Lord and love your neighbors. Thank you. <laughs> that, that made me think of is I'm always telling my dad, because they don't want people to do stuff for them, but if you don't let somebody do something for you, you are denying them the blessing of helping you. So keep that in mind, too. Is there anybody that has any praises or prayer requests? I don't have any praises or prayer requests, but what I do have is I want to tell you, if any of you call George to fix your computer between the hours of 7 o'clock, p.m. at 6 a.m., I will do an intercession. I just was, I was looking up the, the, uh, the definition of intercession, the action of intervening on behalf of another. I've had to do that several times with George. Quit volunteering. You got work to do. If I see he has way overloaded with stuff, I'm going to go let him fix your computer. just want to say um, praise the Lord to my father in heaven and also George is a big help he helps everybody I called George a couple of times but I do space it 
it's months and whatever. He told me how to get in touch with him. Sorry, Gina, I'm not taking over. Sometimes I need him. But one thing about George, when you try to give him a blessing, he just don't know that you can't refuse blessings because blessings is from God. Also, I just want to say, pray for my daughter, Tasha. She just had a little surgery, but she's doing good because I put the guardian angels all around her and also the Lord. Um, I just feel good because we have a beautiful church. It's beautiful people. I feel good. I look at the parking lot when I come in and see how many cars we got, and everybody's happy, you know. If you need me to speak for you, I, may, I will because I have something to say. What I have to say is I love the Lord as much as everybody in here do. So have a good week, and anybody who's sick and don't want to say it, give it to the Lord because I give everything over to the Lord. Thank you. I want to thank you all for the prayers for why I was gone. We had a beautiful time, me and my husband, away. We were gone for three weeks. It's the longest I've ever been gone from my children or grandchildren. and um, It was nice. <laughs> it was nice, I have to say. It was nice, but, you know, when you're on vacation, it's not the real world. It's just not the real world. Everything is kind of distorted and... Um, at first you're kind of uneasy because you're out of element from your daily routines. But, you know, I'm so thankful that every day God gives me that morning time of prayer and silence and my communication with him to set my day, to get that day started with him. And that's the most important thing in my whole life. And I'm just thankful to be home. I'm thankful that everything was safe while we were gone. Um, I love my church here. I love this church. Glad to see new faces, people I haven't seen here. Didn't get to say hi to you because I came in a little late. Um, things are happening, and we just have to be aware and, and go with what he wants us to do. Nancy and Lexi are out sick today, uh, sore throats. Um, so let's remember them in prayer. Also, I know I mentioned my youngest boy is an addict. And um, he is really out there right now. I haven't talked to him in quite a little while. And just keep him in your prayers that God continues to protect him until he um, gets saved, actually, has salvation in his life. But thank you. And everybody have a blessed day. It's the first day of spring. I just wanted to say um, thanks to God because he helps you. No matter what's going on, it doesn't matter. He always finds a way. He always makes a way. And I'm so thankful to God for always being there for me and taking care of the situation I need taken care of. Um, I got a praise report. Um, Friday, uh, I had to go food, uh, buy some food for my mom, and I didn't have any money. I was broke, and God made a way. And then I had to walk eight miles to take it to her, and then God made a way about that, you know, kept giving me the strength to put one foot in front of the other so that I could walk all that way. And the whole way I was walking, I kept meeting people and seeing people, and they're like, they're like, how are you walking this far? And I'm like, God, you know, is helping me do it. Praise the Lord. And everything, everybody I saw, I was talking to about God. So I think it was his plan for me to evangelize to everybody along the way, everybody I saw. So I just want to say thank you to God because he really helps us. You know, he does miracles every day. And, you know, whether they're small ones or big ones or whatever, you know, because there's people with health issues that can't walk that far all the time, you know. And some people, you know, that's like an everyday occurrence. You walk eight days, eight miles or 12 miles or whatever. So I'm just, I'm just thanking the Lord for helping me with everything. Is there anyone else?
Yes, I'd like to thank everybody for their prayers. Don's going to find out Monday, tomorrow, when he's going to have his surgery. And, and we'd like continued prayers for that. And I have a friend up north. Her name is Claire Jean. She's got bunions on both of her feet really bad. She's got to have hip surgery and back surgery. So she needs our prayers. And Don's partner that he had when he was in heating and cooling, he's going to have open heart surgery, we think, this week. And I like prayers for Garnetta. She has a bad back, too. So if you just pray for her, please, we'll thank you for that. Thank you. Um, since we are a praying church, and I do believe as we pray together, I just want you guys to pray for my auntie. She's having a hip replacement in April. We start now, and she won't have the pain. But if she has the pain, she'll have the glory with all of us praying for her. Thank you, guys. Well, number one, somebody took my glory back here, but spring started 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm ready. Everybody ready? <laughs> All right. <laughs> but uh, I just want to say again, um, kind of unbeknownst to me until Thursday, James wanted to come to church and he wanted to come, come into my house. So I've given I've given my daughter and son-in-law a break, <laughs> and, uh, and he's and he's doing great too. He's doing he's doing really well. Stand up, come on over here. James has regular James has regular shoes on this morning. Look at there, get up there, there. God, God has been so good to him. I think I mentioned last weekend that he could have had grass on his feet. And we know that God intersected there and that he didn't have to have. So he's been doing good and getting around the house. Actually went down our stairs. Shannon won't let him, but my daughter. But he went down our stairs one time yesterday. and He's doing good, so. Praise the Lord. Anyone else? Okay. When I chose the song for today, I had forgotten we did it last week, so we're going to do it again. <laughs>
Okay, now, here we go. <laughs> I was so engulfed in the song, I forgot that I got to come up and pray. <laughs> you could bow your heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us all here together today. Thank you for allowing me to fill the pulpit this week. And Lord, please be with Garnetta as she's dealing with her back. Please be with Harry, Don's old partner. He's actually our heating and cooling guy here at the church as he goes through open heart surgery. Please be with Don as tomorrow he should be finding out about his surgery. Be with Charlotte's friend Claire Jean as she deals with the hip and back surgery in the bunion. Lord, please be with Tasha and all the unspoken requests that we have here today. And Elaine's <clears throat> aunt, auntie that needs a hip replacement. And Lord, please be with Nancy and Lexi with them being sick and Gail's youngest son. But Heavenly Father, thank you for all the wonderful things. One with spring being here, it's the beginning of a new life and flowers and colors and everything. And thank you for bringing James to church with us this week, for him wanting to be here with us and him wanting to spend time with, with, with his dad. <clears throat> thank you for my friend Kelly coming here. It, that, that was a great honor and it just made my day. Thank you for people in my life, such as my wife and Janet and, and Jess for helping teach me boundaries. And please, Lord, be, be with everybody and allow them to set boundaries, healthy boundaries, and to be able to help people at the same time. In your precious name, amen. As we prepare to leave, let's stand and sing the good old favorite, Victory in Jesus. story how a savior came from glory how he gave his life on calvary to save a wretch like me i heard about his groaning of his precious blood's atoning then i repented of my sin and won the victory oh victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me built for me in glory and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory My Savior forever, he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. My Savior forever, he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood.
Lord, as we go this morning, Jesus, be with us and give us traveling mercies and be with us throughout this week that we will be ever mindful of your love for us and help us to set boundaries that will benefit our, our life and make us more of your willing servant. And we will pray in Jesus' name, amen.